has the 3,500-year-old Mechizedek Temple been found in Jerusalem? And is it the prophesied tabernacle of David that will be raised up and restored in the end times? That's a pretty fascinating question. Melchizedek is perhaps the most mysterious character in the whole Bible. But was he actually Jesus himself? Did Jesus appear in the Old Testament to Abraham in the form of Melchizedek? Much as he would later appear to Abraham when three men in Genesis 17 announced that Sarah and Abraham would have a child. If so, what does this say about the temple that was just discovered above the floor of the Kidron Valley? What does it say if this was Jesus' temple, if Jesus acted as a priest there in the form of Melchizedek? That makes it quite a temple if it's true. Before we get into all that, a shout out to Stephen Welp for his research on this amazing idea. Now, the temple could be the tabernacle of David that's mentioned in the book of Amos 9.11. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and repair its breaches and raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. If this is referring to the recently discovered Melchizedek temple, which may have likely still been in use in David's day, as we'll see, this small temple may have quite a future. Look at what Isaiah 16, 5 says about it. Then a throne will be established in steadfast love, and on it will sit in faithfulness in the tabernacle of David, one who judges and seeks justice and is swift to do righteousness. Will Jesus reign from this site? Well, maybe. So let's start with Melchizedek or Melchizedek a name which means king of righteousness. And he is first found in an account about Abraham in the book of Genesis. Later, he's found in a messianic psalm of David, Psalm 110. And he's also discussed in the book of Hebrews. In addition to these biblical references, he is also mentioned in one of the Dead Sea Scrolls called the Melchizedek Pesher, a scroll where the ancient Jews writing it definitely thought he was the Messiah. So first, why might he have been Jesus? At the time of Abraham, Melchizedek was a king. He was the king of Salem, which is modern-day Jerusalem, and he was a priest of the Most High God, the one true God. This is one of the reasons that Melchizedek is thought to possibly be an Old Testament appearance of Jesus. Like Jesus, he is both king and priest. These are the only two in the entire Bible, who held both roles. Like Jesus, he is a king of peace. Salem means peace, and he is the king of righteousness. Like Jesus, he remains a priest forever. And according to Hebrews 7.3, he is without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life. That means at a minimum, Melchizedek is an eternal divine being of some sort. Now, Melchizedek appears suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere in Genesis 14, 18 through 20, and then disappears just as suddenly, not to be mentioned again until Psalm 110. This is somewhat mysterious. Melchizedek and Abraham met after Abraham's nephew Lot was captured by Chesod Lamar of Elam and his three allied kings. Abraham gathered a small force of 318 and confronted the armies of the four kings, probably numbering in the tens of thousands. With the help of God, and a battle that reminds me of Gideon's victory over the Midianites, Abraham won. And on his way home, he passed by Salem, that would later be known as Jerusalem. Melchizedek presented bread and wine to Abraham and his weary men, and he bestowed a blessing on Abraham in the name of God Most High. After this, Abraham gave him a tithe, one-tenth of the spoils to Melchizedek, the first tithe in the Bible. That's it, though, just three short verses. But then, in Hebrews 7, 7, we learn that the greater one always blesses the lesser. So by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we are told Melchizedek was greater than Abraham. 
We are also told that Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God who met Abraham, was without father, without mother, without genealogy, without either a beginning of days or end of life, but was made like, or a better translation might be, could be compared to the Son of God, and he remains a priest forever. Hebrews 7, 1 through 3. Psalm 110 is a messianic psalm written by David and is the most quoted psalm in the entire New Testament. Look at all these quotes. Matthew 22, 44. Matthew 12, 36. Luke 20, 42 through 43. Acts 2, 33 through 34. And Hebrews 1, 13. We have indirect references to it saying it is written in Matthew 26, 64. Luke 22, 69. 1 Corinthians 15, 25, and Hebrews 5, 6, 7, 17, 7, 21, all given to prove Jesus' divinity and his ability to be a priest as well as a king. In that psalm, the Messiah is said to be a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, an order that predates the Levites and Judaism. It's also an end-time psalm, which pictures the Messiah as the conquering king of nations who shatters kings on the day of his wrath. It's interesting that in this psalm, in the end times, the Messiah shatters kings just like Abraham did with God's help in Genesis 14 when he rescued Lot. The Dead Sea Scrolls, Melchizedek Pesher, examines this same theme, the freedom of captives. Quote, In this year of Jubilee, you shall return each one to his respective property. Its interpretation for the last days refers to the captives, the inheritance of Melchizedek, for they are the inheritance of Melchizedek who will make them return, end of quote. So, given all this information, it seems Jesus may have been present in Jerusalem in the days of Abraham, in the form of Melchizedek. Obviously, Abraham and Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, knew each other since they lived in the same area. And Abraham recognized him immediately when he came out to greet him, and both knew and worshipped the one true God. So all this brings us to this temple, which was discovered below the city of David on the hill descending into the Kidron Valley. It's ancient, an early Bronze Age building dating to the time of Abraham and Melchizedek. Many think it is the temple of Melchizedek. And if Melchizedek was an Old Testament appearance of Jesus, this makes his temple incredibly interesting. A temple where Jesus himself may have acted as priest. Let's take a look at it. The man speaking in the following video is Eli Sharon, who discovered the temple. Some of the illustrations are from the channel, Israel, My Channel. First, we found this room. So what do we have in this room? What we have on the wall, we have a hole. 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 Yeah. What we have in the floor, a hole. 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 And what we have here, a, a square, a little bit deeper than all that kind of things. OK? So what is useful, OK? This is the question. And if you are very, 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 very know in archaeologists, you know that this is olive press. And here, we're making olive oil. So how are you making olive oil? Smudging the olive, putting in the sack, sack, branch of wood on top of the sack here. You have a weight made by stone. <coughs> and then you roped it. And then the branch of wood started to going down. When it started to going down, what is going down? Also the sack. What's happening in the pit? Small hole here you have a lot, a lot of liquid that came from the olive. As olive oil you can make here, not a lot. Why? Because there's a reason why you're making here olive oil. Can't keep it fresh, you have to keep it fresh. No, another reason. You're wrongly, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, there's another reason and we can read that reason in the Bible, okay? <coughs> and then you do the connection. Okay, in this room, we found a lot of jar broken on the floor, and this is storage room. Also, what we have in this room, you can see from here, you can see stairs. It's mean you're coming to this room, 
And in this room, you can see this is a little bit higher. It's not the steps like we used to walk through. On the corner, we have some platform that cutting in the rock. Yes. And what I'm saying, this is the place where they build the altar. And when the sacrifice animal, all the juice from the, from the altar are coming, and then you collect it here. Okay, so we're talking about the altar building here. And we know that everyone can build the altar everywhere and can worship in God. Sacrifice animal, you know, Abraham did it, Jacob, Jeshua, they're building the altar all over. Okay, but what do we need more than, more than just the altar? But to make it, to make it a temple, to make it, to make it something that we can come and worship in God in this place. We need to have a connection with God. We need the Spirit of God. We need a connection with God. Without connection with God, we cannot build a temple. We can build a worshiping place. We can sacrifice animals, but not more than that. So what we have here, olive place. We have here a place where they sacrifice the animal. And you, let's go to this room. What we have in this room? Vanessa, what we see inside? What is the, the material? It's stone. It's rock. Someone take a flat rock and set it up as a pillar. And what is the meaning of the pillar, okay? And for that, we need to go to the book of Genesis. Okay? Genesis 28, verse 10 to verse 22. I want... Lee, where are you? I'm here. You're the biblical okay. reader. I want you to read it for us. Genesis 28. 28, no. 10 to 22? Yes, 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 yes. And then from that, we will start more understand mm -hmm. where we are, okay? Okay. Okay, from then, 10. From 10. From 10. Okay. Then Jacob Continue. departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and spent the night there, because the sun had set, and he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. He had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth, and its top reaching to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Continue. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will also be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Continue. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on its top. Okay, continue. He called the name of that place Bethel. However, previously the name of the city had been Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me on this journey that I take, and will give me food to eat, and garments to wear, and I return my head to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. This stone, which I have set up as a pillar, will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. This is fantastic. And why we, what we have that, that, that verses from the Jacob story, because when talking about who was the king of Jerusalem in that time, Malchizedek. Melchizedek he was the king of Jerusalem, and Melchizedek was also high priest to one God, Kohen Leel Elyon. Okay, which way Melchizedek is the high priest worshiping God? This is the question, because we are in Jerusalem. So in the Bible we have four verses in the book of Genesis, so we cannot understand from the book of Genesis which way worshiping God, and then we have it in Hebrew in the book of Psalm and things like that. What we know, we don't know how, what he did, which activities he did in Jerusalem, in his temple. Okay, we have Jacob. So when we found that, we found that, you know, we found all these places and, and all this room. And you can see all the room going together. It's not one room here, one room there, one room. It's all once. Yes. 
And I say, okay, there's something very, very interesting here. And then we understand the pillar by the Genesis 28. So what are you doing to the pillar? You anointed the pillar with what? Olive oil. With, olive oil. And from, the, and from <laughs> where the olive oil came from? Not very far. <laughs> okay. You see? Temple zero. You see how it's everything started to connect it? Okay, so you anointed the house of God. But later, you anointed the king. Which king was anointed above the Gihon Spring? King Solomon. Okay, you can see how everything starts to fix it. The central feature of this temple, then, was a stone that was anointed with ceremonial olive oil made right on site. The same type of stone set up by Jacob in Bethel. A pre Israeli type of worship, possibly on this site, right next to the Gihon Spring, where the kings of Israel were anointed with the same type of oil. But one thing about this temple that mystifies me are these very unusual grooves cut in the floor of the final room. Sharon thought they might be for setting up racks to hold dead animals, but they don't look like that to me. And they're in the room with the grain press not a room for sacrifice. Are they instead letters in an ancient forgotten language or maybe even the language of heaven? Give us your thoughts in the comments. Now, how might this site function in the future in the end times? Is it possible, given how contested the Temple Mount is, that this simple site on the slopes of the city of David could possibly be the site where the sacrifices will be held in the end times? as a substitute for doing them up on the Temple Mount. Who can say? It's possible. Will it also be the tabernacle of David that preceded Solomon's temple? And we are told that this site will be raised up again in the last days. So could it be this one? And will Jesus sit there, not on the Temple Mount where most think, but here when he reigns from Zion? Again, very, very possible. Could this early temple site also be the site of Solomon's temple? You know, a lot of people believe Solomon's temple was built in the city of David, not on the Temple Mount. Well, just as archaeologists have found this tabernacle of David and Melchizedek's temple, they have found the remains of Solomon's temple. Click right here to keep watching and discover the amazing findings that point to the location of a temple and even where the Ark of the Covenant sat. Till then, this is Nelson. And I'll see you there.